What's up, everybody? It's Tom Santilli. This might be a little different than you're used to because this is my first ever video edition of the Film Survivor Podcast. So, hi, everybody. I'm Tom. This is what I look like. If you don't uh, look at my avatar, <laughs> this is what you will see. So, yeah, um, I'm glad to be back. It's been a while since we've been on the Film Survivor Podcast together. Um, mainly that's just been out of uh, how the show has changed. You know, when it went to Edge of Extinction the last time around, they didn't do any uh, press interviews on Survivor. And so then it followed like that the next season. And then, of course, Winners at War has Edge of Extinction. So uh, without the Survivor interview as the anchor of the podcast, I've kind of just put the thing on ice for a bit. But uh, I'm happy to announce that I'm going to be coming back uh, regardless of what Survivor interviews I get or not. So um, I have a lot of cool content coming up soon in the next few weeks. I want to wish everybody, uh, hope everybody watching this, listening to this, is uh, doing safe and staying healthy. Just what a crazy thing that we're all going through together here. Uh, so not going to go on that other than to tell everybody that I'm doing fine. I uh, Everything's going good here on the home front, but uh, <clears throat> just to kind of catch you up on everything, yeah, I, I've still been uh, recapping everything for Reality T, uh, Survivor. I also dabbled in Tiger King a little bit, as everybody else did. I wrote a couple uh, recaps for Tiger King uh, for Reality T's site, and um, Winners at War has just been off the hook. I'm absolutely loving it, and I encourage people to check out my stuff and also this podcast moving forward. Uh, hopefully this is not the last of Survivor. We know that with the pandemic, things have been pushed off. Uh, season 41 and 42 were set to be in production, but was postponed and now is postponed indefinitely due to the coronavirus pandemic. And uh, we just don't know what the future holds. So there's that. Then, um, My TV show, Movie Show Plus, is a show that is a Detroit-produced show. I'm the executive producer and co-host, along with Greg Russell. And uh, for those of you that don't know, I am a film critic, member of the Critics' Choice Association. I, I appear locally on TV here. I was on Fox for uh, about four years here in the Detroit area. I currently am on WXYZ, which is the ABC affiliate. And then I produce Movie Show Plus, which is uh, on my TV 20 in Detroit. And uh, we're the number one locally produced program. But you don't have to live in Detroit to watch a show. You can find episodes on movieshowplus.com. It's all about movies. And obviously, with the movie theater industry just kind of coming to a grinding halt here, uh, we're pivoting a little bit. And that's why we're coming to you, actually, today. This podcast today is going to start off, uh, we're going to check in with a lot of the local movie theater chains that are also not so local. A couple of the chains that are in Michigan that we'll be talking to are national chains. So this could affect you outside of the Detroit area as well, if you're listening. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're going to be talking over the next several weeks, over, over the next several episodes of the Film Star podcast to different, uh, you know, relevant people in the movie theater industry to kind of find out how the pandemic is affecting them and uh, what they've been doing in the meantime, and also what they think the future holds for the movie going audience. And uh, I got some really interesting stuff coming up with that. I'm also hoping that once the finale of Survivor Winners at War hits, I'm hoping to land a couple interviews uh, with that uh, after the finale. So stay tuned. I don't have a confirmation on that, but I will definitely bring you what I can in the world of Survivor. So to those new to the podcast, I know hopefully you uh, haven't tuned out already, but uh, my name is Tom Santilli, and I'm a film critic, and I'm a big Survivor guy, and I cover it for Reality T. This podcast is all about both. If you love Survivor, it's a great podcast for you. If you love movies, this is a great podcast for you. And if you happen to be like me, and you love movies and Survivor, this may very well become your favorite podcast. Uh, we'll be bringing you, again, lots of interviews, lots of insights, and uh, hopefully we'll make it fun. But uh, let's get right into it. We're going to talk again with a lot of uh, people today on the podcast. So let's just get right in. Um, here's my first interview. It is uh, with the CEO and of uh, Imagine Theaters. It's Paul Glantz. 
He's a major figure in the movie industry, and he is joining me up first. Here we go. So I am uh, very honored right now to uh, be speaking with uh, Mr. Paul Glantz, uh, co-founder and chairman of Imagine uh, Theaters, Imagine Entertainment. Uh, Paul, thank you so much for taking time uh, to uh, chat with us here on Movie Show Plus. It's my pleasure, Tom. Glad to be with you today. So, you know, I guess, um, you know, as we speak and, you know, as you know, things change so rapidly, um, get us caught up a little bit on uh, the trajectory here of, uh, of Imagine uh, since the pandemic hit uh, versus where we are now. Well, as you can imagine, it's uh, not exactly business as usual. Yeah. Um, we um, have had the good fortune to be able to uh, retain all of our salaried personnel and our hourly managers. And we've deemed their work essential because what they've been doing is um, uh, what I call the task that uh, you refer to as if I ever had time. And so it's involved a lot of extra cleaning. Sure. Um, and at the senior executive level, it's involved a, a lot of uh, planning uh, relative to what it's going to look like when we reopen, when we're going to be able to reopen, what kind of steps we're going to take, uh, when we're able to reopen to assure the public that uh, they're in good hands. And uh, of course, we've been uh, immersed in our finances, uh, you know, forecasting uh, how long our cash would last. And I'm you know, and we're very fortunate. We're in good shape. We have been able to uh, satisfy all of our creditors as our bills have come due. Um, we um, were busy applying for some uh, some loans, and one of the purposes of a loan is to perhaps acquire some assets of one of our uh, bankrupt competitors. So, you know, I'm a believer that you're either a seller or you're a buyer, and if uh, you know, the circumstances are such that we can expand during this period of time, then we're going to try to take advantage of that. That's fantastic. And I was going to ask you about that, too, because I know that Imagine is one of the you know fastest growing chains. And I know um, in, in Michigan, especially, there's been, you know, lots of Imagine theaters, uh, luxury theaters that have popped up over, you know, the past several years here. Um, I was going to ask you about that. If you saw this, you know, it's kind of like the old uh, making, you know, uh, lemonade out of lemons kind of a thing, you know, uh, if you're looking for opportunities in that way in terms of this being, I don't want to call this a good thing, obviously this is not a good thing, but long-term um, success for Imagine Theaters possibly coming out of this mess. Well, you got it right. It's not a good thing for anybody. Yeah. Concurrently, um, we think that there may be some opportunities here. Uh, one of our uh, Michigan brethren Goodrich Quality Theaters declared bankruptcy in February before the, uh, the shutdown occurred. And so we're studying those assets right now to discern if any of them could be repurposed into Imagine Theaters. Uh, now uh, we learned on Saturday that CMX Theaters declared bankruptcy. And they have some in markets that we're currently in, in Minnesota and Illinois. And so we're going to be uh, studying those opportunities as well. It's not to say anything necessarily come from it. But uh, we feel like uh, we should do the due diligence to discern if there's an opportunity there that we should be uh, pursuing. What do you think is the future? I know it's, again, things change so drastically, but where we sit now, what could you tell moviegoers uh, in terms of what they might be able to expect moving forward? What is the movie going experience going to look like? How's it going to change? In my best case scenario, it wouldn't change much. And here's why, Tom. I think that going to the movies uh, is about enjoying a communal experience. And, and so we've already, as you could well tell from visiting our theaters, instituted social distancing before the term was even coined through the introduction of reclining chairs. Yeah. Uh, when we put in reclining chairs, we lo lose about two thirds of our seat count. And so we've already substantially uh, decreased our capacity through the advent of reclining chairs. And so I'm hoping candidly that it, it doesn't look a lot different. I mean, I think, for example, we will uh, probably have a greeter at the door uh, asking folks to use some hand sanitizer on the way in. Um, it's entirely possible that uh, most guests will be comfortable wearing masks or, uh, uh, or the, you know, our governor will mandate that they ma wear masks. But at the end of the day, I think there's something special 
about watching a film uh, with, uh, in a, with, with an audience in a communal environment. And I'm, and I'm hoping candidly that, that that comes back and it comes back strong. Well, and that's interesting too. You know, there's always been this debate every couple of years, it seems like in the movie industry, people, you know, oh, the VCR just came out, you know, movies are going to go away forever. You know, DVDs, you know, it was Netflix and streaming. Um, this is clearly one of the biggest challenges the industry w will face. But it, it's also emerged this, this concept of virtual cinema. Um, I noticed that Imagine has been active in, in doing this virtual cinema where uh, guests can still support uh, their local theaters by way of watching movies, you know, on demand at home. Do you, do you see that in terms of Imagine's involvement with virtual cinema? Is this going to be something that's going to be an ongoing development, or is this kind of a stopgap until we can get back into theaters? It's, um, it's not going to pay the bills, I can tell you that. <laughs> it, sure. It's not paying the bills, and it, and it doesn't have the means to pay the bills. I think in candor, uh, our audience is not necessarily the ideal audience for virtual cinema. Mm -hmm. I think the Detroit Film Theater, maybe Cinema Detroit, uh, folks that really like watching specialty and art films sure. are a better audience uh, for virtual cinema during this period of time. We um, uh, have, of course, emphasized popular entertainment, you know, big budget Hollywood films and so forth. And so uh, I don't think that uh, in, in our case, virtual cinema is going to be a savior. For a short time, you guys were, um, I thought this was a really cool idea, but right in the beginning of the pandemic, I, I noticed that you guys were offering like 10 gallon bags of popcorn that uh, people could pay and come by and pick up curbside. That seemed to me like an innovative idea that might have a lasting future. Like for those people that might not, you know, want to go out to the movies that day and have a movie at home, maybe they would stop by still and grab some of that, that popcorn, you know, the movie theater popcorn. Do you see any kind of interventions, you know, innovations coming out of the pandemic that you might carry on into the future? Yeah, we're going to bring that back. You know, we were um, a little shy about it, candidly, um, given the governor's perception of what's essential and not essential. And very candidly, we didn't want to be shamed by uh, folks on social media wrongly asserting that popcorn's not essential. Uh, but with the beginning of easing the restrictions, we're actually planning to bring back carryout popcorn very soon here. And by the way, I mean, uh, we've been offering carryout popcorn since uh, I had my first cinema going back to 1989. Wow. In Clarkston, we had guests that would come by and buy movie theater popcorn to take home with them. So uh, I guess what's old is new again. <laughs> Yeah, and so the, the other debate going on right now in the industry is so, you know, you have to have something to show. And there is not another big, the first big movie that is on the slate is not until mid-July. Um, even if, you know, here in Michigan, if, if they lift the stay-at-home order and you're able, you know, to open the theaters, do you foresee Imagine opening as soon as they can? Um, or are you going to wait it out until there's actually, you know, tentpole blockbuster films to show? We were talking to our trade association last week, and um, we have it on uh, good authority that the studios are prepared to provide us with uh, quite a way of historical titles that they think uh, folks would like to see on the big screen again. And so we would be delighted to bring those back to sort of uh, allow folks to be reintroduced to the movie going experience. And so um, we will open, I think when we're allowed to open, uh, provided that we can uh, staff sufficiently, because uh, candidly, one of the economic anomalies that, that many folks don't quite uh, grasp at this point in time is that uh, there are folks that are uh, collecting unemployment that provides them more compensation than they would enjoy earning, uh, you know, working. So uh, we'll, we'll work through that. And I'm, you know, and again, we've kept a lot of our, our we've kept all of our managerial time, team on We'll see if uh, if we can properly staff our venues, then we're going to probably get back in business as soon as we're allowed to. And you know, people see your face a lot too. You know, you're you you appear in some of the promotional um, advertisements that are always you know hilarious and funny in front of the theaters uh, at Imagine. People people see you around. Um, you're active on social media. How is how is Paul Glantz 
personally uh, taking all of this? How are, how are you doing? How is your family doing through this time? Well, I'm, first and foremost, I'm pleased to tell you that we're all uh, healthy. I think I actually came down with it very early. Uh, my wife, Mary, and I had visited the Cayman Islands on a vacation. And when I got back, I was within three days, I was really sick. And I was sick with a headache and fever and body aches. And it lasted two weeks. So uh, wow. though I haven't been tested for the antibodies, I, uh, I think there's a pretty good chance that I've already had it and gotten through it. And I think that for the vast majority of folks who don't have a substantial underlying health issue or, uh, or, or particularly aged, um, that's, that's really the result here. Yeah. And so I'm, um, I'm challenged to some degree in that, um, you know, I, I, I want folks to feel like we're providing them with an environment that's inviting and that they can come back to. But I also know it's up to each individual for him and her to decide if they feel secure coming back to a venue with uh, communal seating and so forth. So I think it'll be kind of fascinating to see how it all shakes out. Um, I'm, uh, I'm optimistic. You know, you're right, I'm active on social media and I've gotten a lot of feedback from folks who say, we can't wait to come back to the movies. Yeah. And so I think there's uh, that sort of the, that's half or, or a third or who knows what the proportions are. And then we've got the other half that say, I'm not coming back to the movies ever. <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. So we'll, I think we'll figure it out it's over time, right? That's right. That's right. And Paul, if you could leave people with something, um, what, what's, what's the main message that you would like to get out from Imagine to the, the moviegoers here in Michigan? Well, we've um, always strived to provide our guests with the ideal and optimal entertainment experience. And, and I've always believed that cleanliness is close to, close to godliness, so that we've strived to offer the most uh, hygienic environment possible. We're going to continue to do that, of course, and perhaps even redouble our efforts beyond that. And so, again, I think it's really within um, the realm of each individual to determine if, if they're comfortable returning to communal environments. Uh, I would respectfully submit to you that particularly if you're wearing a mask, it's safe. But, you know, I'm not a public health expert. Right. And, um, and so I think it's up to each uh, individual guest to decide uh, on their future, and, and they will ultimately determine our future. Well, Paul, I know you're a really busy guy. Uh, so again, I appreciate your time here. And, and thank you so much for uh, talking with us about movies. And uh, I sure hope to see you uh, up on the big screen again at an Imagine Theater very soon, I hope. Thanks, Tom. Great to be with you today. Thank you. So what better way to start things off than speaking with Ruth Daniels, managing partner of the Maple Theater, our friend of the show, a longtime sponsor of Movie Show Plus. Um, we love the Maple Theater. Ruth, how are you doing? I'm doing fine, thanks, and we love you too. Oh, we thank love you so much. Movie Show Plus. <laughs> it, it seems like just yesterday we were in a crowded theater watching the Oscars. At and the... it was a great, <laughs> great party. Boy, yeah, dude, that was awesome. That was so yeah. fun. But I... Uh, what happened? And like a month later, we're all, uh, you know, giving ourselves haircuts. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good way to put it. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I mean, who would have ever thought this could happen? I mean, that we would, movie theaters would close. You know, I always told my children, I always told everybody that the only time a movie theater would close, it would have to be an apocalypse because nobody wants to stay home. I mean, a kid needs some place to take a, a date on, on <laughs> Friday or Saturday night, you know? Right. And there's nothing like a shared movie experience. And then, boom, the apocalypse. <laughs> and, and now, so specifically with the Maple Theater, uh, so you just said it. You guys were kind of going through some changes anyway. You guys were uh, just, you know, kicking off. Um, you, in the last year, you did some renovations and had the new, you know, uh, eatery there, uh, the Maple Cafe, and, and some, like, upgrades like that. And then this thing hits. Uh, give us an update, I guess. Just give us an update on what the Maple Theater is up to and where you guys were, like, before, right as this pandemic was starting. Well, it was interesting because, you know, we had reopened the cafe, um, Great Lakes Coffee was back, and when we first reopened it, which was in November, we had uh, the PETA post come in, and um, and you did a great spot on the PETA post, and it was um, it was good food and everything else. And those guys were gearing up for food truck season, so they were leaving, and we had a new uh, couple, uh, um, actually a brother and sister team come in, and they also have a food truck, 
Um, but they were just cooking our old menu. And we had just mm. kicked that off. It was very quiet. We did it on a secret cinema night. <laughs> People loved it because we had our grown up grilled cheese. We had a burger. You know, we had some really good food again. Um, not that we didn't with Pita Post, just back to the normal food. Yeah. And um, we were about to send out the press release and, you know, really start gearing up. And then boom, coronavirus. Mm. So um, in retrospect, it's probably good we hadn't sent it out before this happened. Sure. We uh, did all of the advertising and everything, but um, so but people were so excited to come back and eat the food that they loved there and everything. And um, so I feel like it was just starting to take off again. But you know what? It's okay. It will again. We'll be fine. <laughs> Yeah, and speaking of that, you know, there's lots of talk right now with, you know, how the movie theater reacts and responds, you know, how the industry responds to what's going on right now. Uh, the We've heard, you know, we're going to hear from a lot of the different uh, heads of the movie theaters and things like that on the show over the, this episode and, and future episodes. But what are you hearing in terms of uh, when you expect the Maple Theater to maybe be able to reopen and just kind of what you expect to we'll, we'll see with the movie theater industry? Well, you know, um, I'm, I'm optimistic that we'll probably be open in the summer. Um, I don't know exactly when. I know the first big Hollywood release is set for mid-July, mm -hmm. um, Christopher Nolan's film. Yep, and um, it's not necessarily a film that would usually play at the Maple, but who right. knows? <laughs> um, we were actually toying with the idea before this happened of playing Mulan this year. Okay. We were going to open Mulan. Mulan's supposed to also open the end of July. Yeah. So I could see possibly opening with that. Um, but again, it's all, it's, we have to take step by step, see how it goes. I'm anxious to see what happens in the states that have opened movie theaters this week. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, you know, and watch, watch the progress in the next couple of weeks, because I think that might be indicative of what happens. And it's confusing too moving forward because, you know, even if like here in Michigan, um, as we speak right now, things are changing every day. But as we talk right now, we're still under the stay at home order until May 15th. Uh, say that that lifts and movie theaters are able to open. A lot of them are not going to have things to show. They're not, they need to have films in order to show, you know, to make money and to, to exist. The Maple's in a unique situation because you guys kind of, like you said, you you kind of mix in bigger films occasionally, but you also have a very, you know, niche focus on, you know, some of the independent movies, foreign films, um, you know, live opera, you know, events and Fathom events, those kind of things. Will the Maple Theater kind of follow suit with, let's say, if other bigger chains say, you know what, even if we can open in May, we're not going to open until July just because we don't have any films? Or do you see Maple opening ahead of the game? Um, I'm pretty sure. I mean, it, it, it's hard to say right now. It really is. I mean, I, again, we really have to watch how it goes. Um, I, I think you may see us playing some things we might have not played before. You know, I was just talking to a friend of mine who is in Hollywood, who, you know, works out of there. And I was saying, you know, if, if a theater opened this week, I'm wondering what they're going to play. I guess they could play like Star Wars because that's always a good film to see on a big screen. Sure. You know, the latest Star Wars. Sure. Things that we're playing before we shut down. And, um, but that wouldn't necessarily be our film. One of the things people really miss about the Maple is Secret Cinema. Mm. So I could see doing that. The thing is, is that a lot of people have been talking about playing classic films and that's all anybody's doing is watching classic films at home right now. So I don't know that that's the right content for sure. when we first open. Sure. Um, as far as operas and fathom and things like that, they have already rescheduled a lot of things. And remember the, the opera was live. Yeah. So we really, the opera has to go back to work before it can be a live program <laughs> sure. so, or even a taped program. So I don't know that we'll see that that quickly, but a lot of those events were rescheduled for fall when, we closed down. God. So um, it's, it's really hard to say. I hate to predict anything. I mean, yeah. I'm hoping for the best and I'm hoping, you know, everybody will reopen in the summer and then we'll have a great rest of the year. I mean, I'm really looking forward to seeing Wonder Woman, which was yeah. postponed um, and Black Widow and really my, my top movie of the year is Top Gun Maverick, which is now December 23rd. So I can't wait for that one. <laughs> I don't know if it's going to be at the Maple, but I can't wait for that one. You know, do you do you do you see anything changing with the movie going experience? Do you feel like are there going to be uh, social distancing kind of things in in order at first? Do you do you foresee that at the Maple? 
Yes, I do. I mean, I believe, you know, we'll space out the films probably mm -hmm. more. You definitely, I, and I think this is in all movie theaters, there will be more time in between films for cleaning. Mm -hmm. um, with our POS system, we can uh, lock off seats so people are not sitting as close to each other, you know, and, and only sell half the seats or sure. a quarter of the seats if we want to. Um, we have a rather small lobby that does uh, you know, fall into it too, that you have to worry about that a little bit. I think there's gonna be a whole different way of cleaning your theater and, you know, disinfecting everything constantly. And I think if, if people act accordingly and how they've been lear learning to act, I mean, I don't, I, I believe if everybody's polite and stands apart and things like that, that it'll be fine. You know, I, like I said, I always said, unless there's an apocalypse, people wanna get out of the house and there's nothing like that shared experience. I believe one of the best things that's, that is going to come out of this pandemic is I'm hoping, I'm praying that people are home, screenwriters writing great rom-coms and comedies and things to make us laugh, not just about this experience, because we need some good, fun movies again. We need Absolutely. some things that make us happy. That's what I'm hoping comes out of it. <laughs> well, Ruth, thank you so much. Uh... I just, it, it's so cool to be able to talk to you. I miss, I miss seeing you. I miss being at the Maple Theater. Um, and I really appreciate you joining us here. And I wish you the best and stay safe. You too. Thank you, Tom. Take care.